you are being slaughtered and you don't realise it. It all happened already. In 2008, the world stopped. The whole debt system blew up. So we are paying the debts by printing money. Pure debasement. The system broke in 2008. We then changed the financial system with the Basel III agreement, which forced the banks to lend less and to hold more treasury. Why? There's going to be a lot of supply of treasuries. The whole system, everybody's aware that it's broken. It broke. The looming collapse of the entire global financial system and economy is a popular topic among financial analysts and commentators, especially those in the alternative asset space. Sound money advocates, both in gold and cryptocurrencies, have been talking about the impending collapse of the fiat money system for decades, arguing that there is only one way out of massive debts, reckless government spending, and dwindling tax revenues. Many believe the only way out is the complete collapse, a reset, if you will, that will wipe out trillions of dollars and impoverish tens of millions of people across the globe. Real Vision founder and CEO Raul Pal has a slightly different view on the issue, arguing that the collapse we keep expecting and dreading already happened in 2008, and what we have now is a post-collapse financial system that's stealthily wrecking everyone. According to Pal, the global economy came to a grinding halt in 2008 when the banking and real estate industries completely imploded due to the enormous amount of leverage in the system. The complete meltdown of the global financial system was very nearly the end of the monetary system as we know it today until central banks came to the rescue by announcing multiple quantitative easing rounds. Instead of bearing the burden of seeing everything wiped off, governments worldwide made a choice to print as much as needed to pay off their massive debt expenses and pretend all is well for longer. So, the governments got to play the hero of saving the world from the great financial crisis without checking their spending sprees, all at a very great cost to the populace. This is why Pal maintains that the world is not waiting to get f It already happened about 16 years ago, and the burden of upholding this charade of stability and normalcy has been pushed to everyone through the annual 15% inflation tax that's stealthily robbing people blind and impoverishing the common person even further. In a recent discussion with Tom Bilyeu, Pal discusses the gloomy state of the global economy, how the 2008 crisis changed the world forever, and the only way out of the mess. The renowned macro analyst and former Goldman Sachs executive vividly describes the entire problem, outlining how we all became debt slaves and the only solution to the problem. As we bring you clips from the video, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. In 2008, the world stopped. The whole debt system blew up. We had to have a debt jubilee of resetting all government debts around the world at zero so we could afford to service it. We've kept rates low. We've been then using the balance sheet of all of the central banks just to pay the interest on the debt from the previous cycles. This is this everything code thesis that you and I have talked about. So we are paying the debts by printing money. Pure debasement. The system broke in 2008. We then changed the financial system with the Basel III agreement, which forced the banks to lend less and to hold more treasury. Why? There's going to be a lot of supply of treasuries. The whole system, everybody's aware that it's broken. It broke. So what is going on now? Well, for it to actually broke, the down 90%, it's all going to be 1929 again. Can't you just see it? You're missing the point. They're debasing the currency by 15% a year. It adds up to a staggering loss of wealth. It is in a tax that you don't see. 15% a year debasement is easier than increasing your tax rate 15%, which is politically unacceptable, which is what they need to do to pay the debt because the printing of money just debases the currency. So you are paying it. We are all paying it. You can't have assets going down 90%, you know, the core collateral of the system if they're debasing the currency because they go up optically because the currency is going down. The Venezuelan stock market goes up in Bolivar terms and down in dollar terms, right? So therefore, if your collateral keeps going up, which is what they learned in 2008, is we can backstop the entire thing by debasing the currency quickly, the collateral goes up, and hey presto, my debts aren't so bad. Okay, magic. It's not magic, as you know. It's a sleight of hand. 
It's not pure magic. What they're doing is robbing you in a different way. Okay, this has happened before. This is exactly what happened in the 1940s and 50s. Saddled with massive debts after World War II, the large economies did the same thing. Financial repression, that yield curve control, which is buying of government bonds, keeping interest rates low, which we've seen, and they just printed money. And over time, the value of the debt had eroded. And what they'd managed to do was create a productivity miracle, which drove GDP growth. I also believe that GDP growth equals productivity plus population plus debt growth. I think debt growth died in 2008 and all debt growth now is servicing of old debts. And population has been shrinking. So economies have been slow and productivity is low because of aging populations. We're just bringing AI and robots into the workforce. It's infinite human, infinite humans. So we GDP growth driven by productivity and population growth is what I think is on the horizon, which is what rescues this. Rescues this, but after what? 15% a year debasement of currency? You know, you add 10 years of that and you've lost most of your money. So none of us disagree. We're all getting but it's how are you going to get Are you going to get in one go because it all burns to the ground? Or are they going to so you don't really know you're being screwed, but you're just going to get angrier and angrier? That's what we're seeing. Politics has gone like this because everybody's so bloody angry because they can't figure out who's screwing them and they're blaming each other. What screwed them is there was too many old people and they borrowed too much money. At the moment, Raul believes central bankers and other policymakers have a handle on the situation. As long as they continue printing and coming to the aid of the markets, Raul expects the economy to continue to operate as it is today. Ailing, surviving on massive debts and more debts, and barely operational, but surviving all the same. However, Pal is not ruling out the possibility of an ultimate collapse that would bring everything down in an instant. According to the Real Vision CEO, the singular obligation of the Fed and other central banks now is to prop up the baby boomer investor complex, because if it goes, the whole system implodes again and everything will be reduced to an extremely chaotic environment. Pal believes the boomers are at the very heart of the problem because of their sheer number. So all money printing exercises now are just an effort to add another band-aid to the massively wounded system, which ironically further worsens the situation. Yet, central banks cannot stop slapping on band-aids. Powell's conclusion from all of these observations is that the system is completely screwed, and every one of us right along with it. Here are more clips from the interview. If I'm right that AI plus robots is infinite productive units, and you see how fast it's coming, you literally are not capable of understanding what an economy looks like beyond 2030. That's the problem I've got here. I'm not concerned about the cliff of death, right, that we're going through. I found an asset that I can invest in crypto or I could buy technology and it's offsetting the mess of the debasement. So I'm fine. What's harder is to say what the hell does an economy mean after 2030 when you've got endless AI and robots and AGI? What is a company? What value do you provide in that world or I provide? We sit there talking to people about it and thinking our way through it, but both you and I are developing AI tools of which we will have a digital Tom and a digital Ral, and we don't even need to turn up to these and they'll do a pretty good job. We're both working on these things, right? But are we going to be just replaced? The point being is when you go to like Nick Bostrom, who, who is the, the key thinker about this at Oxford University, who wrote the book, I can't remember the famous book about the whole kind of where the future's going. There's a group there, an economics group there, who share the same concerns as me. It's like, if this is right, you could double GDP in a year, global GDP, or a week. What, what, what do companies mean when AI... I have a theory that OpenAI is using AGI to build its own AI, which is why they're iterating so fast with, what, 500 people? F***ing madness what they're doing. How, how fast they're iterating. I've never seen anything like it. Even Elon Musk is like, I've never seen anything like what's going on here. The more we have AI to, to build AI, to build businesses, the faster and faster this goes. So in answer to your question, the explosion could be the other way around. It, could not, it might not be the economy imploding. It could be the economy exploding in a way that we don't even know how to deal with it. 
What do humans mean? What is our job? You know, all of this stuff you and I have talked about. I actually worry about very different things. I don't worry about the economy going down the toilet because I know how they're dealing with that. They've kind of set the rule book. I can make money from that. That's okay. It's this other bit. That's the hard bit. That's more scary. Powell's exponential age thesis is based on rapid technological advancements, especially in the fields of robotics and artificial intelligence. According to Pal, the world's severe debt problem is worsened by the aging population and reduced productivity. We are simply not producing enough to assimilate the massive debt load naturally. This is where Pal believes AI and robotics come in, changing the entire GDP formula by bringing in infinite productive units and exponentially increasing productivity. In his words, AI infinitely scales knowledge and robotics infinitely scales physical work. As a result, Pal believes the productivity boost we will get from the exponential age will solve the debt crisis and significantly increase GDP growth, eliminating the need for a global collapse. It is hard to argue with many of the points Pal has made in this video. The world is changing fast. We are speeding head-on toward the exponential age where technology rules every sector. Investors who correctly position themselves now will be a crucial part of that future. What are your thoughts on PAL's exponential age thesis? Please drop your comments and observations in the comment section below. Also, ensure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Everything helps with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching.